Breaking news overnight, an ex-Navy SEAL and one of America's best-known snipers murdered at a gun range in Texas, allegedly by a troubled former Marine. This comes in the middle of America's debate over gun control and rising concerns about troops returning home with PTSD. ABC's Rena Ninen is on the story in Washington this morning. Rena, good morning to you. Dan, good morning. He was 38 years old, and this morning his colleagues are stunned that the man who is self-labeled as the most lethal sniper in U.S. military history was gunned down in Texas. He was the man dubbed as America's deadliest sniper, a member of Navy Team SEAL 3, shooting targets the length of 21 football fields away. Chris Kyle, who served four combat deployments and earned seven medals of bravery, shot Saturday at the place he should have felt most at home a Texas gun range along with his neighbor. Tap, rack, bang. Audiences know Kyle from the reality show Stars and Stripes and from his New York Times best-selling book, American Sniper, reported to have shot down more Iraqi insurgents than anyone else. You were so uh, well known by the Iraqi insurgents that you were fighting that they put a $20,000 bounty on your head. Is that right? Yes, sir. Kyle volunteered his time to helping vets cope with PTSD reintroducing them to firearms. On guns.com, he explained the difficulty of returning from war. Good, now all of a sudden, you don't have an identity. You have to learn a whole new way to act. Now we're learning he may have been killed by a man he was trying to help. Authorities have arrested 25-year-old Eddie Ray Ruth, a former Marine believed to be suffering from PTSD. Ruth stole Chris's vehicle, fled the scene, but was apprehended after a car chase. It's unclear what the motive was. Overnight memorial pages were created online. A message from Dean Kane, Chris's partner on Stars Earn Stripes. 2013 started out fantastic, but it's a heartbreak. Hashtag sad day. And Sarah Palin. Chris was a wonderful man, a good friend, and a true American hero who loved our country and served honorably. His death raises concerns over whether enough is being done for U.S. soldiers returning and for home and suffering from PTSD, especially as the war winds down in Afghanistan. Kyle leaves behind a wife and two kids. Raina Ninen, thank you for starting us off this morning. For more on this, let's go to Chief Global Affairs Correspondent Martha Raditz, who's in the Middle East right now covering tensions in that region. Martha, this gentleman was uh, a legend. What are you hearing from your sources in the military in terms of reaction this morning? Well, well, the reaction has been overwhelming, quite honestly, Dan. I have heard from so many soldiers, Marines, who really, truly are heartbroken. Chris Kyle was a legend. People looked up to him. People who didn't know him, they've all read his book. And this morning, there is just overwhelming sadness about this. We have endured more than a decade of war in this country. How much of a concern is there right now about PTSD among our returning troops? And will this case uh, bring much needed attention to this issue? Well, we can only hope it will bring attention, Dan, because I, for one, don't think the country is quite prepared for the amount of PTSD that has been suffered. And now we have so many troops returning after 10 years of war. Something struck me that Chris Kyle said recently. He said, when in the military, everything is for a greater good. When you return to civilian life, everything is for your own good. It's such an adjustment. You're away from your band of brothers, your band of sisters. You felt like you had a real cause. All these vets return. It is very difficult transition. They don't want to be seen as victims, but there are numerous problems. There are about 20% of returning veterans who say they have some sort of PTSD or mental health issue. That is an enormous issue. Martha Raddatz with such valuable perspective on the Sunday morning. Thank you, Martha.